Uh, hello. Is that loud? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hi, my, no, sorry. Um, my name is Theo Watson. Um, I am a co founder of Open Frameworks, as Golan mentioned, I'm part of a group called uh, Graffiti Research Lab, um, member of also an uh, awesome collective called Free Art and Technology that mainly exists on the web um, that many people here are involved with. Um, uh, I guess my main thing outside of like working on stuff like Open Frameworks and uh, debugging libraries and boring stuff like that um, is uh, making uh, interactive experiences uh, for people and just like yeah I guess that's uh, so um, this is sort of some of the stuff that I've worked on um, and basically like you know the, the elements that go into doing the work that I do is sort of like it's kind of three part of design research and code so a little part a little bit of it we're just sort of generally experimenting on things and uh, playing around not really knowing what it is that we're making um, and then working with code uh, to do that but then really like the part to me that gets interesting is when sort of you combine that with uh, traditional sort of design um, and try and make something a bit more so f for us uh, we sort of see code as a means and um, for and we see it as a means to kind of create wonder in the people that experience stuff that we make. Um, so uh, the person that I work with is uh, Emily, who's uh, my partner, and um, she usually doesn't like a picture being shown, so uh, I had to sneak this one in. Um, and um, this is usually how she likes to represent herself. Um, <laughs> Um, I met Emily at Parsons when we were uh, both in design, work, uh, getting our degree in uh, design technology and she was finishing her thesis which was an interactive uh, DVD for children um, where it's basically a branching narrative of, uh, applied to sort of the, the programmer, programmable aspects of a DVD menu system. Uh, so she created this entire story which uh, children could kind of uh, interact with with the remote control. Um, so uh, those sort of as she came out of Parsons, there was an interest to do more and more kind of interactive work. I um, mean, I was also getting into uh, these types of projects with computer vision and taking classes with uh, Zachary Lieberman. Um, these are some of her projects. So um, yeah, so uh, after Parsons, we basically started working together on stuff where her background is sort of in visual design. Um, and designed for kids, and my background is sort of more in sort of programming and interactive installations. And so this is some of the projects that we've worked on together, and I'm going to show you a little bit kind of behind the scenes of kind of how we've made the projects and, uh, and hopefully do a couple of demos. Uh, so uh, the first project we worked on today, together was a project called uh, Funky Forest, which was for a children's festival in Amsterdam called the Cinekid Festival. Um, we were asked to develop an installation and we were trying to think of the things that we really enjoyed doing as children. Um, and one of those things was like when you're playing in the beach or playing in a forest and you're kind of damming water up and creating pathways for water and sort of just generally just kind of controlling water and creating channels and stuff and just seeing what happens, the sort of this idea of open play. Um, so we, we wanted to create like a nature-based installation that somehow allow children to play in an open way without sort of really sort of telling them too much uh, what, they, what they should be doing and um, creating an environment that supports play. So um, we created this project called Funky Forest which is sort of three-sided projection installation which um, has a, where water flows across the floor and reacts to the movement of the children and they can control it with logs and rocks uh, to get the water to where they want it to go. And that's coupled with an interactive wall where um, if you make a tree shape, uh, a tree grows that takes the shape of your body uh, where the branches sort of match the, the shape that you've made. Um, and yes, yeah, so this, this was sort of the first version we did of it and people really liked it. It was very popular at the, the festival. I um, mean, this is a video uh, from the project. <laughs> This was like something we made in Open Frameworks, and um, it was really like a really great test of Open Frameworks as well, just to see what we could do in a very short amount of time. Um, so we're doing a lot of stuff like 
combining like textures, animated sequences, and then programmatic elements as well. So to try and try to create this mixture of uh, programmatic and design uh, elements. Yeah, um, speak up a bit. Okay. So the kids, kids kind of got really wild and. Um, uh, let's see if this. So and also. Uh, the kids, based on the size of the kid, like the smaller kids would uh, draw, would make smaller trees, and bigger kids like these guys were hacking it and making gigantic trees. Um, and we found like some uh, some people would just be interested in the floor. Some of these guys were chasing the creatures, and then there would be like uh, certain people, like this one girl who was trying to manage all the boys and telling them where they need to put the water and stuff like that. <laughs> anyway, and. Uh, yeah, it was just really interesting to see the reaction. Uh, we had like up to 20 kids there playing in one uh, in a five by three meter space. So we were really quite surprised that it could kind of work with that many people. This wasn't actually the speed that it. They'd all be like fed caffeine. Um, so this is just a little kind of diagram of uh, how we how we made the project. Um, we basically had these three projectors. Um, one was looking straight, going straight down, and it also had a camera that was going straight down that was flooded with IR light. And then we had another camera and projector pair that were looking at this wall, and we had a row of infrared lights along here that were kind of backlighting uh, the kids uh, so that the infrared camera could see them. And so this is uh, what it, the image looked like to the, the camera, so it doesn't see the, the, the projection. And then this is sort of some of the stuff we were doing with uh, uh, looking at the contour of the body to kind of try and understand where the hands and the head were. This is before the connect and all this sort of skeletonization stuff uh, was really accessible. And then this was a kind of little, just a, a sketch of, kind of how you could take a contour and then find the head, the left hand, the right hand, the left foot and the right foot. Um, So we, uh, we were asked to install um, a permanent version of this in New York um, for a children's cafe uh, called Muma. And it's basically a really nice space um, where parents can go with their kids, they can do art projects, they can learn about like uh, seasonal food, and they really kind of very, they put a lot of importance on seasons and stuff like that. And um, so when we heard about this, we, we suggested sort of we'd make a custom version of Funky Forest for them. And we would do one that had uh, four different seasons and, and kind, of sh kind of try to highlight that and match in a little bit with the theme of the space. Um, so here is the four seasons of, funky, of the new Funky Forest. And then uh, here are some sketches from Emily of like, what the creatures would look like in different seasons. So this is the hangar. Um, and up there you can see him looking kind of mottled from, because that's the autumn one. And then the winter hangar, he's all sharp. Um, and then this is kind of what he ended up looking like. Um, Instead, he has that little hat kind of thing, as it's called. Um, and then this is the full cast of characters, and uh, based on uh, the, when the forest is most healthy to least healthy, and then the four seasons. And kids really liked this guy, Mustachio, who I'm pretty sure I only made based on my mustache. And they would deliberately kill the forest, or make the forest unhealthy to bring Mustachio out. And we even made a puppet of him. Um, so this was just some sort of parts of the process, which I think I won't go into now. But um, we did a lot. Of, we put a lot of importance on testing. So like not just kind of thinking things are going to work, but like actually sort of testing testing things like color resolution in the space with the actual hardware. Because what you find is things like colors actually change quite a lot when you're projecting in a space. So this is only sort of kind of testing a color palette that um, we would let them go back and change things based on. Um, so I'm going to skip forward because I think um, And then we just, we just finished a new version at the Singapore Art Museum um, this summer. And um, this is sort of an update where like now a few years later we can like run like three times as many particles for the water and just do a lot of kind of little tweaks that we always wanted to make. Um, So we, the water is, feels a lot more water-like now. Um,
And then this was really nice, this little video, I just... So these kids were playing for about half an hour, and then they suddenly realized that the creatures were afraid of them. Um, and so then they spent like 20 minutes just running around chasing the creatures. And we like, we like that there's these sort of different levels of interaction, like... You can, there's a very obvious interaction like controlling the water and making a tree with your body. But then these like subtle interactions like the fact that the creatures react to you are kind of like things that kind of reward kind of further play and discovery. And then uh, I think this kid wanted to kill the forest. So Really cool. And then uh, later she was zooming out, and 
Um, and we, when we were working on this, we didn't realize kind of like really how it would translate to print. The poster's about this big. But um, she zoomed out and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's up there in the corner now. <laughs> so, um, okay, I, I, now that's the, I think that's close to the full poster. Um, oh, no, that's, that's the full poster. So, it's this part right here. But, and you can still see it in print, but it's really, really tiny. But I, I like this idea that you can kind of discover these little stories within, within the posters. And uh, I guess we just got, we got them finally printed after two years. And, um, hopefully, we'll be putting them up online soon. Uh, so, here's some more shots. Um, this was an interactive ecosystem we worked on in New York. And the idea was that instead of the, the, the ecosystem deriving its source of energy from the sun, it would derive its energy from the uh, voices of the participants who uh, were using interacting with it. Very small, like some type of installation in a way. This is a sound bush that reacts to the frequency of the voice and changes the leaves based on that frequency. This is where your sounds come in and they get digested by um, these guys who eat them and then spit out digested sounds that can be processed by the environment and create little plants uh, on the ridges and, and feed these fish. And then these guys are actually mimicking, recording your voice and mimicking your voice later. So you can kind of, they kind of keep the system alive when no one's, uh, when no one's using it. And then the seed spitters spit the seeds out there. And in the water they feed the fish, but then the raw sounds, um, the raw sounds uh, hit in the water, they actually scare them away. I don't know if that, you show it right there. And there's like two microphones, so you can kind of blow things around by making blowing sounds. And um, it was just like a, it was a very kind of multi-layered uh, sort of piece. It was kind of funny. Knee deep um, for the next syndicate and or the last syndicate two months ago maybe now and um, it was just really we wanted to explore this idea of scale and like let kids interact with, and see themselves firstly at a bigger scale but in a world of a bigger uh, of a different scale and um, and it's kind of kind of hysterical so I'll just show you the video of it. Um, There was different, like, uh, different environments. This one was a city, and your you, your body were, was a building. And uh, if you stood still, the building would sit down, and the other buildings would start to trust you and sit down next to you. But then, if you stopped or you moved around, the buildings would get scared and run away. Um, so it's kind of ridiculous. Um, and we, so we had these uh, contact mics in the in the green screen boxes that were triggered by how hard the kids were stomping. <laughs> and then so there's other like an underwater scene, and you know the kids would get down, and we didn't really anticipate that, but they really like to get down into the water and pretend to swim around. And, uh, and in this one, if you stomped, you'd, like, the fish would run away, and then you'd see them like you'd create ripples in the water. <laughs> and then this one was like the like uh, nature, and like um, if you stood still, leaves would start growing off of you, and uh, roots would grow from the bottoms of your feet, like right there. And then you could shake them off. <laughs> There's these little eyeballs that would bounce around. And then this was the moon. 
environment and here you could like stomp and send these little guys flying, these movement flying into space and like bouncing off the stars and stuff. This girl kept licking the stars. Um, this was a project we worked on uh, beginning of last year for uh, Boards Magazine. They wanted to have an interactive issue and uh, this was just when the Esquire interactive magazine had come out and we didn't want to do, they kind of wanted us to do an AR marker type thing and we kind of wanted to move away from that um, and do something a little different. Um, so we kind of did all this research into what we could do with um, with a magazine cover and instead of tracking a, a marker we were tracking the, the whole cover and and then uh, just trying some experiments based on that so we were trying like some 3D graffiti stuff uh, using uh, the magazine to control your view in, in a world um, uh, kind of the idea of like a, a 3D version of here to there like a, a 3D poster which you could kind of peek into and look around um, and uh, we kind of found that a lot of this stuff was really clumsy because the magazine's not a great interface for moving in an interactive way. So we really liked to kind of, we, we thought, let's just simplify this. Let's look at rotation of the magazine and let's see if we can tell a story that changes based on which way, you, whether you're rotating the magazine sort of up or down and, and really just keep, keep, this, keep it in, uh, simple, but let's see what sort of story we can tell. So, um, we started working on this idea of rise and fall. So that there, there was this character that, um, oh, the, the idea that the story would basically change whether you're rising or falling through the scene, um, and everything in the world would change based on uh, whether you're rising or falling. Um, so Emily designed the cover of the magazine, and it was really nice because we got to design the front and the back cover, and um, we we were able to use it for tracking and uh, I'm going to go through some of the sketches. We had these little characters that followed you through the story. Um, so we thought fishes and birds were nicely analogous to this idea of rising and falling. They're kind of like the opposite, opposites. And just this is some about the planning involved. Uh, but maybe it's best just to run. Oh, and then each, each one of the nodes has a kind of little story that, that um, is different whether you're going up or going down. See if this works. Hopefully, it doesn't see myself in. Well. Do you want more light? Um, I think it should be okay. I think. Good. So we had a little kind of helper thing. So when you start, you hold the magazine up, and it sees that, and it asks you to rotate the magazine. So we rotate it, and that's just sort of so people can. Uh, kind of get to understand uh, how you work in this world. So once you've gone through this little step, three-step process, uh, you can start moving into the world. So a bright beginning to an upward sinking, we lift, lift our ascension in a vertical direction. And if you go down, it's like, uh, oh, I'm not uh, Clear night submerge, we sink in downwards flight. So you can go in either direction in this story. Um, I always go off for some reason, but you can kind of go in anywhere where you want. So here, like, is this weird bird's nest. Feathered, feathered friend with pointed beak. Well. There's a lot of hidden sort of little elements to this. So we have a kind of 3D effect. Which is sort of, you know, as you're, if you move the magazine to the left or the right, you, you can kind of pan around a little bit. And that was left over from the camera experiments we were doing. And normally it's not cropped like this, it's just that we're, we're on a smaller monitor. But um, the idea is with this one, like, when you, when you fall past the plants, you cause the leaves to die and they fall away. But then when you come and again, they grow back even bigger, so you can actually kind of go kind of back and forth with this one and make the plants really, really big. So here they're growing new branches.
Um, two groups is one, fight to be two. Uh, and difference is subtle as two shades of blue. together and drive them apart, stuck in their ways, they struggle apart. Um, and it's sort of like an oil and water little kind of thing that whether you try and mix them up but they always separate and become, uh, go back to being themselves again. Um, and then here is the attraction repel. Oh, yeah. These are the beasts, and they're kind of like these little beasts that spit out spores, and you're, you're not really sure if they're trying to like kind of lure you into some sort of trap or, but that, I like that the eyes follow you, it's kind of cute. Um, but then this other thing we did, which was we had the back cover and we thought like this, uh, what could be a nice opportunity is because the whole project was open source, let's actually sort of show uh, people how it works. So if you turn the back cover and show it to the magazine, you actually see the sort of debugging screen and you get to see uh, the tracking, uh, things like the gravity, the velocity, how many things you still haven't discovered yet. And then if you rotate the magazine, you get a little video that shows the kind of process of us making it and all the kind of uh, different experiments we are trying and stuff like that. Um, It's using this library called Ferns, which is an open source tracking library that's very fast and pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, that was that was the project, um, and the, all the source code of, of this is online, and, uh, and you can still download like the magazine as a PDF and print it down and try it out for yourselves. 